Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Absolutely no doubt this is the real deal. Sweet. And what do you think it's worth? Right at about ten dollars to $12,000. OK. And no, with all due respect, Absolutely. you're not really an appraiser. Uh, no, I, I actually take that. Okay. No, I, uh, I actually see. I've been doing no, this for about 25 and, years, no, so I've seen a lot. I've okay, seen a no, lot of I, autographs, I, I, I and I get where you're coming from too. But at the same time, um, I've seen plenty of these pieces. Done a lot of research on these through the years. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I respect your opinion, yeah. but you know, we all have opinion. Good day, folks. Today we will show you entitled customers on Pawn Stars. Realistic selling price on this instrument would probably be. $25,000. That's absolutely ridiculous because uh, back in the 90s, it was appraised at a minimum of $100,000. I'm just saying from knowing what I've just recently sold myself, I don't think anybody's going to step up that high for it. I can't agree with your assessment. Oh, that, yeah. And that's, that's, we're just at where we are. I mean, thanks, sorry Jesse. About that. You know, it was really cool to see Simi's guitar, but to be honest with you, I'm just kind of glad I got out of there without a black eye. Three trigger shotgun. This seller came to the shop to see how much he could get for this rare three trigger shotgun. I'm not gonna lie, this gun looks extremely cool. What do we got here? I got an old Stevens shotgun, three triggers. It's been in the family for about 60 years, and I've been toting the shotgun around for the last 15 years. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance adjuster. Sounds like you should have a briefcase, not a shotgun. One thing that I think is really cool about the shotgun is because of the third trigger. It's the one that opens up the breech. OK. And I believe it was made for somebody special. That's all hand engraved right there. Oh, absolutely. We get Stevens guns in here every now and again, but this three trigger model shotgun is something you only hear about. It's rumored Wyatt Earp had one. It's definitely badass. How old is this shotgun? I would put that at about 150 years old. It's in really good shape. You can see kind of like the wavy lines in the barrel. Pretty much what they would do is they would take wire, wrap it around, and heat it up and hammer it till it became one solid piece of steel. Real expensive process, and at the time, the best steel in the world. So do you have any idea of what you're looking to get out of it? 100,000. Would you mind if I called a buddy of mine down to have him take a look at it? That would be fantastic. All right, man, appreciate it. I really want this thing, but when you're dealing with a gun that's this old, lots of things can affect the value. And the last thing I want to do is make an offer and find that I'm way off. Well, Corey, I have to say this is one of the rarest shotguns that I've ever seen. I've only seen maybe four or five in about 16 years of doing this. It's all on the frame and also on the trigger guard. Very nice scroll engraving. This gun's seen a lot of wear, a lot of use. This might be a repair. You can see where the grain doesn't quite match, so it might be a little splice right here. It does have pitting on the barrels. This gun would classify to me in fair condition. How would you rate that as not being in excellent condition? It's 150 years old. You know, in the gun trade, it has to be in really, really mint condition. I think this gun in the condition that it's in now would be worth about seven to a thousand dollars. There's no way. If it were in really nice shape, maybe two to three thousand, and I'm saying that maybe. So, as it turns out, it is real. Even though it doesn't seem in such bad shape, it is. And that brings the value from $30,000 to $700. If you're going to hold me to make you an offer, I'm going to offer you around 500 bucks. There's no way. I honestly would like $10,000. If I were you, I would chase down the guy that offered you $2,500 and shake him down for him. Uh, so you want the 500 bucks? No, I can't take the 500. It's worth more than that just to show to people, my friends, when they come to visit. You know, man, it's been in your family this long. You might as well sure. keep it for another 60 years. I think Corey was reasonable offering 500. I literally laughed when he said he'd still take $10,000 for it. Was he serious? Well, the deal was over at that point. Honer harmonica. This next item was a little weird. It's a gigantic harmonica, a Honer harmonica at that. It's not that big a deal, but it's a fun piece of decoration. What do we have here? This is a Honer harmonica store display. OK. We've all played a harmonica once in our lives. Right. I'm at the pawn shop today to try to sell my giant Honer harmonica store display. I found it about three years ago at a flea market in California. I am asking $500 for the harmonica just from doing some research. I think that's what it's worth. It's really cool. So we got M. Honer here, which is Matthias Honer. Matthias Honer was born in Germany in the 1830s. 
the 1850s, though, you realized the watch business for an individual watchmaker was going away very, very quickly. So he saw the writing on the wall, uh, but he was also working with an instrument maker and got really, really interested with the harmonica. He started off making a quality harmonica, ended up getting salespeople in the United States, and uh, the United States just fell in love with the harmonica. But at one point, they were selling 10 million harmonicas a year. Wow. Lucky for us, Rick is the expert this time, and his verdict is that even though this is pretty cool, it's non-functioning, and he wouldn't pay more than 75. I'm surprised he was even interested. This is probably 60s or 70s. This would have been in most likely a music store. Um, you know, it's plastic. You know, back in the day though, like they built giant ones for like uh, big department stores. They put out in the window there that were actually metal and uh, actually worked and everything else like that. Uh, and this one is sort of cool because it's the Marine Band one, okay? And I'm pretty right. sure that's John Philip Sousa right there. You wouldn't think of like a Marine Corps band being like the hippest, coolest music, but back around the 1890s it was. And in his Marine Band, he actually had a guy playing a harmonica. It's cute. I mean, it's it doesn't light up or anything, which would be cool. No, no and, it um, sure doesn't. It's non-functioning. So big thing, how much do you want for it? I want $500 for it. Okay. It's really, really cool, but it's not $500 cool. If it was even non-functioning metal and wood, you know, I'd be getting in the ballpark. Okay, all right. It's plastic. The cardboard's coming off. Okay. Here's 75 bucks for it. It cost me $150 to fill my truck up with gas right now. How about if we meet in the middle at like 400? Nah, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Honestly, for for that, I'd probably just hang on to it. I, I just, I think it's cool, and, and I, I think it's worth more money than that. All right, um, if you change your mind, I'm in for 100 bucks. How are we going? You. Thank you. This guy still felt like he could get $500, considering he paid $150. Someone just told him a story, because it's not enough to fill up his gas tank. A Led Zeppelin signed record. This next clip is the actual definition of not everything that shines is gold. What do we got here? Led Zeppelin one signed by the full band. By the full band, I only see what? Jimmy Page signed the front, and on the rear, John Bonham, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones. That's pretty amazing. Jimmy, being the leader of the band, refused to sign the back. This was his puppy. Yeah, Jimmy Page is now the one uh, begging Robert Plant to play. There's probably 24 authentic signed Led Zeppelin albums in existence. So I'm looking for $22,000. Led Zeppelin is one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Every one of their albums was in the top 10, and six of their albums were number one. Now, four signatures on an album, if this is real, I probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. <laughs> The big question is, how much do you want for this? 22000 As far as Led Zeppelin collectors go, this is the holy grail to Led Zeppelin items. My huge concern on this, mm -hmm. we got Jimmy Page on the wrong side. So have you ever had it, the signatures checked out? Uh, yes, I independently, yes. Uh, let me call up my friend, take a sure. look at it. Of course. He really knows his stuff, so hang out for a few minutes. Sure. I'm going to go give him a call. Maybe we can do something. Good to see you, man. How are you? Doing good. Good. How Hello. you doing? Nice Hi. to see you. This is it. This is what I called you about. The greatest rock band of all time. Yes, they yeah. are. Well, trying to put together a signed Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. album is really difficult. Uh, John Bonham died in 1980. Robert Plant, uh, John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, they're not really that accessible. If the signatures are good, if everything checks out, there's no doubt this is going to end up being one of the rarest items I'm ever going to see. The big thing is, are they real and what's your opinion on what it's worth? OK, so the first thing I'm going to do, Rick, is look at it under magnification right there, ballpoint pen. Um, and you take a look right here oxidized it's a little older you know you could tell so we know we've got live ink on here that's a great sign the next thing i want to do is take a look at the examples i have on file the robert plant signature is something i take a look at all the time but i want to go back to the bottom signature whole name is connected and he's doing the same thing here john paul jones okay so it's all legit based on everything i've seen absolutely no doubt this is the real deal sweet and what do you think it's worth Right at about ten to twelve thousand dollars. Okay. 
and no, with all due respect, yeah, you're not really a appraiser. Uh, no, I, I actually take that. Okay. No, I, uh, I actually see. I've been doing no, this for about 25 years, so I've seen a lot. I've okay. seen a lot no, of I, autographs, I, I, I and I get where you're coming from too. But at the same time, um, I've seen plenty of these pieces. Done a lot of research on these through the years. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I respect your opinion, yeah. but you know, we all have opinions. You, Thanks, ma'am. Yep. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yep. Thanks, Dr. Yep. Cheers. He didn't hesitate talking back to the expert. I mean, he's just doing his job. I would give you eight grand for it. I, again, miles apart on this. You know, I mean, what's your best price on it? My best price uh, would be seventeen five. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd go eighty five hundred, but no, I, I'm sorry. You know, okay. I appreciate the offer. Okay, well, if you change your mind, come back. The offer's open. No. Um, have a nice day. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you. I think what the appraiser said and the way he reacted really cost this guy his deal. 1995 World Series Ring We all know that World Series rings are always welcome, but there are some that aren't as valuable as you would hope. What do we got here? I have an Atlanta Braves 1995 World Series ring. Team of the 90s. Uh, got there seven times and then finally won World Series in 95. Yeah, I got it from a buddy of mine who needed the money, and you know, I thought it'd be a good investment. Atlanta Braves, 1995 World Champions. This belonged to Ted, and he issued it or gave it away? It could make it worth more. They had some pretty good people on the team back then, didn't they? Sure, they were good, but no one really liked them. <laughs> the first championship rings were given to the Giants in 1922 when they beat the Yankees. But by the 1970s, championship rings got flashier with lots and lots of diamonds. So it's no big surprise that these things can go for a lot of money. I mean, everybody wants a player's ring because it was by a guy who actually won the World Series. So what do you want to do with it, my man? Yeah, I'd like to get 13000 for it. 13000 huh? We make really good money when we sell them to sports collectors, but every ring is different, so getting the price right can be tricky. You mind if I have a buddy come down and take a look at it? Uh, how, how come? What, what, uh, I'd like to get the money and, and get out of here. You know, right now, if you have to hold me to an offer, I'm going to offer you four grand because it's a staff ring. My guy might come in and tell you it's worth a little bit more. All right, that's fair. OK. All right, let me give him a call, and I'll be right back. All right. He wanted $13,000 out of it. But the way he reacted when Corey said he'd call an expert sure made everyone feel a little suspicious. They're going to bring in an expert, so hopefully he'll verify that it's worth the $13,000 I'm asking for. The guys call me down to the shop whenever they have some sports memorabilia that they need some more information about. 1995 Braves championship ring. The Braves are actually the oldest continuously playing team in American professional sports. Oh, wow. I've seen World Series rings sell for tens of thousands of dollars, so I'm really excited to see what this ring might bring. What concerns did you have with the ring? It's a staff ring. Right. I think it might be Ted Turner's ring, which is kind of crazy. I mean, what do you think it might be worth? Let's take a look at the ring here. We have a large diamond set on top of a blue stone, and we're going to have 18 smaller diamonds surrounding it. The company Jostens, they made the rings for the 95 championship Braves. So on the inside, we should see the Jostens logo. Unfortunately, this isn't even a staff ring. This is what they call a salesman sample. They're provided to the team to beforehand so they can get a look at the ring, see if they like it, approve it, and they make them from there. Number one, the inside of the band it does not have the Jostens logo. And also, it's issued to Turner which is Ted Turner, the owner of the team. So there's no doubt that this is what we would call a salesman sample. OK. With the original box and everything, you're looking at around two grand. All right. The disappointment in this guy's face. Needless to say, there was no deal here. Well, if you heard what my guy has to say, thinks it's a salesman sample, I would offer you around $800 for it. Oh, that's OK. I'll, I'll just take it home. All right, my man, I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. All right. Semi Mosley prototype guitar. What you're looking at isn't any simple guitar. It's Semi Mosley's personal blue gospel guitar prototype. I mean, I don't know much about guitars, but that sounds special. I brought something I'd like to show you. OK. I'm assuming that's a guitar. Not just any guitar. This is Semi Mosley's personal blue gospel guitar prototype. A Mose right. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> This guitar is probably the most well-known rare guitar anywhere. It's listed in the Celebrity Registry. 009 1965 Gospel Prototype Blue, Semi Mosley's Personal Gospel. All right, I'm interested. It sounds really, really cool. How much do you want for it? Well, 
at a high energy auction event, it would bring somewhere between 200,000, 250,000. But realistically, I'd take 100,000 for it. Seller wanted $100,000, and the expert said $25,000. I don't think he'll like the fact that Rick will listen to the expert. Let me give a buddy of mine a call. I welcome that, however, since I've had this guitar since 1969 continuously and got it from the guy who made it, I am considered the industry expert on this guitar. Okay, well, um, it's not that I don't trust you, but you know, if I started trusting my customers, I wouldn't be in business long. I understand. Hey, you understand? Sure. Jesse, my man, what's up? Come on. So is this the Mose Wright in question? Yes. It is a really cool guitar, man. Very, very cool. This is kind of a pretty well-documented guitar. There's a couple things I can get a date on this. For one, the Mose Wright of California on the pickups, uh, the style of the knobs. I would say this guitar is probably 67 or 68. This is the prototype gospel guitar. All right, big question. What do you think it's worth? A realistic selling price on this instrument would probably be $25,000. That's absolutely ridiculous because uh, back in the 90s, it was appraised at a minimum of $100,000. I'm just saying from knowing what I've just recently sold myself, I don't think anybody's going to step up that high for it. I can't agree with your assessment. Oh, that, yeah. And that's, that's, we're just at where we are. I mean, thanks, sorry Jesse. About that. You know, it was really cool to see Simi's guitar, but to be honest with you, I'm just kind of glad I got out of there without a black eye. It, it's a cool guitar, I'll give you that. But a one of a kind doesn't always bring a fortune. Come on, you know you like it. Obviously, we're not going to make a deal. So all I can tell you is good luck. Thanks. He didn't hold back telling the expert off, though. That attitude won't get him any deals at this pawn shop. Smith and Wesson, 320. I usually think when a gun comes in, you can't go wrong. And as per usual, I'm wrong. What do we got here? I have an amazingly rare gun. Amazingly rare? Yes. The Smith and Wesson, 320 revolving rifle. People who collect Smith and Wessons, this is the crown jewel right here. <laughs> it's really rare. Where did you get this thing? I actually bought it at a yard sale. OK. It's not a rifle, it's a pistol. Well, it used to be a rifle. There was a rifle stock on the back that mounted on the back of this right here. There was also a stock right here from underneath the barrel. That's what this whole setup is for. And this thing had a much longer barrel on it. So why is it so rare? Smith & Wesson didn't play with the prototype a lot, so no one bought them. And that's why it's the most collectible Smith & Wesson ever made. Yeah. Smith & Wesson has been making guns since the 1850s. But this thing's different. It's one of their rare flops that didn't sell well. Since no one bought them, they're very rare, and that makes them very collectible. So basically, you were stuck. You could turn it into a pistol, or you could use it as a hammer. <laughs> Do you have the shoulder stock or any of the other parts for it? Unfortunately, I threw it away. You threw away the stock? <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not know it went with that gun. You know the stock alone probably worth over $1,000? Oh, my god. Are you serious? Yeah. And how much did you want for it? I was hoping to get 5000 for it. Um, let me have my buddy come in and take a look at it. Let's get his opinion on it, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. All right. Hey, Craig, how you doing, buddy? Corey, what's new? What's up? How's it going, Great. man? OK, thanks for calling. Well, this is it. Wow. And I haven't had one of these in my hands in a long time. This is yes. a very, very rare gun. This gun was made between 1880 and 1890. They were trying to make a revolving rifle. A lot of different companies were trying to do that, but they made less than a 1,000. It was a very bad design. The greatest thing this has going for it is that it's rare. Do you have the stock? I didn't know it went with the gun, and I threw it away. Oh. If this was in mint condition, had the stock, full barrel, you could get north of $15,000. With this, it's in relic condition, but it does have the original grips. These are vulcanized rubber grips and those are quite hard to find. So what's it worth? Between $800 and $1,000. Are you serious? Is yeah. that it? I think as a dealer, you buy it, and you hope you find the guy that needs the grips. Thanks, man. Dick, I appreciate thanks. it. So are you still interested in selling it? I don't know that I would want to sell it for less than 1000 I'll give you 800 bucks for it. Condition is everything with old guns, OK? If you would do $1,000, I would sell it right now. I'll give you 800 bucks. I think that's more than fair. And how about we meet in the middle? We'll do 900 All right, 850 bucks. If you do 875 you got a deal. 
You're gonna make money on it. I, I really believe you're gonna make money on it. All right, 875. All right, thank you so much. Go write it up, son. I think she did her research, but Rick and Corey are not easily convinced, especially not with a gun in this condition. Even though this gun is cool and old, its condition definitely brings the value down. Ivory oh. tusk. A woman came into the shop looking to pawn her ivory tusk. Looks cute, huh? Well, Rick deals in value, not cuteness. Oh, what do we got here? An ivory tusk. And what do you want to do with it? I want to pawn it for seven to 10 days. So how'd you get this thing? I bought it in Taipei. How much did you pay for it? I paid a lot. Unfortunately, it's not ivory. Apparently, they do this to a lot of tourists. They charge a lot for this fake ivory tusks. Nobody likes to learn they've been lied to, but she had to know. What do you mean it's not ivory? This is bone. It's pieced together bone, and it's made for the tourist trade. I've seen this hundreds of times before. They were in Asia. They went to a market. They were told they were ivory. They spent a lot of money on them. Ivory would be a lot heavier than this. Who says? Says me. <laughs> bone is porous. Ivory is not. Ivory is completely solid. See the panels, the way they come together like that? Well, if it was real ivory, it would just be one solid piece. And what they do is they cut up pieces of bone, and they shape it around a piece of wood, and this is what you get. As a matter of fact, through the split right here, you can see the wood that's underneath it. When you go overseas, there's a lot of unscrupulous dealers who will tell you it's ivory when it's not. I mean, ivory used to be needed for billiard balls, concert pianos, and a few other things. Nowadays, you have synthetics. I don't like the process of getting ivory. I don't like the politics of it. I don't like anything about it. How much were you looking to get out of it? 1,000 to 15. There's no way. I would loan you like $100 on this. No. That's what I can do. Do a little bit better. There's no way I could do better. It's not real, it's bone, okay? It's, it's beautiful. But I don't loan on pretty, I loan on what I can sell it for. Mm. Mm. Okay, I mean, that's basically what you got. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm very upset. To this point, Rick wasn't interested at all. What surprises me is that she still felt like she could convince Rick of taking it and give her $1,500 at that. Not gonna happen. 1958 Glastron boat. It's hard to not get excited with a boat especially when this looks so good. A guy just pulled in the parking lot with a boat he wants to sell. So Chum and I are gonna go check it out. So what do you have here? It's a 1958 Seaflight Glastron. Damn, they wanted this thing to look like a 57 Chevy, didn't they? Sure did. <laughs> Is it a convertible? Uh, this boat was made in 1958 by a fledgling company named Glastron. There's probably only 150 of these boats left. It was 1958, and everyone loved the style of the 57 Chevy, so let's come out with a boat that looks like a 57 Chevy. Normally, I don't buy boats, but this thing is cool. It looks just like the 57 Chevy I got for the old man's birthday. It's definitely tempting because it's an iconic look. In 58, the space race was just starting. Anything they could make rocket-like was cool at the time. This thing's supersonic? Uh, no, it's not supersonic. Um, this thing probably did 30. Does it work? Yeah. All right. You ever smash this thing out on the lake? I don't know what you mean by smash. Drive it like a rocket. This Glastron boat is awesome, but boats are tough to sell. So it has to be a home run. I mean, you got all the original chrome and everything seems to be here. Yeah, this was an affordable family boat. Um, but do you know why? Because it was a little 17-foot boat. No, because it was fiberglass. Wood boats were moving out. Yeah. Fiberglass was coming in. Ooh, school's in session. You just got schooled. <laughs> Sorry, dude. So what do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. How much did you want for it? 10-5. Ooh. Um, this is my problem with it. It's like lipstick on a pig. I mean, we have a terrible paint job, OK? It doesn't have the original motor. I, I realize all the flaws with this boat. But that's not the point is just the styling. And can you even find one? Uh, but it's still all about making money. And there's no money here for me. I mean, I wish I could do something. It's just I don't even want to make you an offer. There's too much work that's got to be done for me to make anything. OK. All right. That's fine. Well, thanks for bringing it in, though, man. He was basically insulting me with the, the, the paint thing, the petty stuff, you know? That's a good-looking boat. Even though Rick was definitely interested, there are several things that aren't original. There's no money in this deal. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video to your family and friends. See you soon.